Hey, this video I'm making in response to someone's comment on uh, one of my other videos where I was showing how to embed a table of contents into a PDF file using the command line tool PDFTK. Uh, the comment asked whether I knew how to change the page numbers and it wasn't very specific. I, I don't know exactly what the person was asking for, but I suspect that it was having to do with something that's often annoyed me about scanned PDFs in particular. In other words, ones that are generated by scanning something like, in this case, a book that I've got right here, where um, when you're on page one in the book, it's not page one in the file. So for example, in this one, I have to go to page 15 to get to page one in the book. And then after that, it's page two and so forth. And I think what the person was asking was, do I know how to change the PDF in such a way that um, that the page number, if I typed in a page number two right here, instead of taking me way back here, it would actually take me to page two of the text. So what you're trying to do is uh, fiddle with the, uh, like the, the underlying metadata of the file. And uh, what I discovered, with, there's a name for this, it's page labels. And yes, there is a way to do that. And I found it this morning, th so I thought I would share. So I've got here <coughs> a book that I made a, a nice digital edition of um, last year sometime, a uh, nice HTML EPUB and so forth. And this was my target copy that I was using for reference. And uh, this one has not had the page numbers fixed yet. You can see here, if I go to page two, it goes there. When I go back up page one, it's the, the cover of the book. And so I'm gonna show you how to go through and um, fix this so that if I typed, for instance, page 55, it would go to page 55 instead of what you see up here, page 41. All right, so uh, the first thing you have to do is uh, use PDFTK to uncompress the file so that you can edit the file in a text editor. And so I'm gonna do that. The file that we're looking at here is called appliedcounterpoint.pdf in camel caps. So the command is PDF, oops, are you typing? There, the PDF TK, and then applied counterpoint.pdf, and then you give it the name of the output file. Output, and I'm just going to do ac dot, uh, underscore raw dot pdf, and that tells me that that way the file name gives me some indication that this is the raw file that I can edit. And then the command uncompress and press enter. And after a moment, it is done. And if I look for the uh, file there, you can see over here, I have the new file that is ac underscore raw dot PDF. Okay, so in a moment, I'm gonna go and edit that in a text editor and add a little block of code that I found at this uh, website, where was it? Is it not this one? Hang on, I have not. There it is. Okay, I thought I had this open already. So I found on uh, Stack Exchange on the super user area how to change internal page numbers in the metadata of a PDF. This this is where I got the um, codes. What you have to do is go inside the file in a text editor and look for this section right here. This says slash type, space, slash catalog, and then slash pages on the next line. And so it's only four lines of code. There's an object beginning and an object ending up here. And what you've got to do is go in and insert, under this line that says pages 10R, insert a new block called page labels. And that's this block right here. And then they give an example of a couple of things that you can do. Um, <coughs> So the, the first line, they say you can label it cover. Actually, I'm gonna go to my own example right here. So on a previous file that I was working on, the, the very first page, because it was a Google scan, was this um, automatically generated thing from Google with all kinds of disclaimers and legal stuff. And so I gave that page a label called disclaim. Now, one thing you've gotta do, keep in mind, is that uh, it counts starting at zero. So it's... Uh, whatever page you want something to happen on, you subtract one from it. So this would be page one in the document, it's page zero according to this indexing thing that they've got going here. And then on the next page, so 
page two of the document, page one in the index, I put a label with just an empty parenthesis so that there would be no label at all. And then I found uh, the dedication page and decided to call it dedication and so forth. So let's look in here and see what I might want to do. Let's go, here's, uh, go back to page one. Actually, I could call that one cover. And then uh, page two, maybe I'll call it uh, nothing actually. And then I think the next one I want to do is the title page. Yeah, so this is the title page of the book and you can see up here it says page five. So I'm gonna go in here and put four because of the, the indexing, I'll call that title. I'm gonna duplicate that line on this editor, that's control D to duplicate the line. Um, and then the next page should be copyright. So I'm gonna change this to a five, and duplicate that line. So the, yeah, the next page is the copyright page, and then the dedication page. So I'll call this six dedication. Uh, yes, and then there's another blank page. I'm gonna copy that line. Oops. And put <laughs> that's pretty funny. Um, so let's make that page seven is just uh, blank. And then the next thing I want to do is start counting the lowercase Roman numerals. So you can see here in the preface, there's no page number, but according to their internal numbering uh, sequence, this ought to be page number five of the Roman numeral lowercase. And so I'm gonna say this is page nine of the document. So if we go here and put page eight, and this, what this does, on, on page eight, start lowercase Roman, this lowercase r I guess means lowercase Roman, and then there's a command to tell it which numeral you wanna start at. And so I wanna start at five, I think. Let me just check and make sure. The next page of the preface is Roman numeral six. So yes, this then, this page number nine, which is eight using the zero indexing, should be lowercase Roman numeral five, <coughs> okay, so then the last thing I want to do is tell it where to start counting in Arabic numerals. And on the other document that I was looking at, that was page 22, but I don't think that's the case here. Is, wasn't it page 15? It's a table of contents. Give it a sec to catch up. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so yes, it's page 15. So I'm going to put 14 right here. And then the command is to... Uh, slash s means start and then slash uppercase d I suppose means um, digits <laughs> I don't really know what the uh, uh, nomenclature means in here but so now I've got a block of code that I can paste in there and you can put comments to yourself to tell what these things do if you want to by prefacing the line with a percent sign <coughs> um, okay so I'm just gonna save that. Now the, now the next thing to do is to open up the file in the text editor. So I called that ac underscore raw. I'm going to do vim. Um, incidentally, I was not able to get my genie text editor to open this thing up. I had to use a command line text editor and I don't know if that's going to be the case on every platform or with other editors or what, but uh, whatever the case, I, I had to do that with this one. Um, what I'm going to do is, this is a very, very long file with something like 10,000 lines in it probably, and so I'm going to open it up where it finds the string catalog. So on Vim, you can tell it to do that by doing Vim space plus slash, and then if you do catalog, it'll open it up to the line that has that word in it. Okay. Oops, I forgot to... Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to give it a, um, a name, a uh, file name to open it. There we go. Okay, so right near you can see that um, type, catalog, page layout, two page. Okay, right here on line 563,005, 
this is the line that says slash pages and I need to put the code that I just generated under that line so I'm going to press O to open up a new line and go to insert mode and then I'm going to go back over here and copy and paste this whole block that starts with page labels I think that's right Where is it? Oh yeah, see, I forgot to, there was a part that I forgot to copy on my other example. Okay, catalog. Yeah, so um, let me select these again. There's the block, that, the page label block. I'm going to put, do control C to copy that to the clipboard and then control shift V to special paste it into the text file. And now I'm going to save it by doing um, uh, colon WQ. All right. So now that file has been um, edited, <coughs> and the thing to do is to recompress it and then open it up to see if it worked. So we do PDF, -t the, the format is similar to the other one PDF TK, and then the file name that you were just working on, AC slash uh, underscore raw output. Um, and then I'm going to do uppercase ac.pdf just to make it different from the other. And then compress and cross fingers. Takes it a moment. Okay, it's done. Now let's go, let's see if it worked. Uh, open it up. And looky here, already I see that at least something worked because in the upper left hand corner now instead of saying uh, nothing it says cover now this says nothing nothing and this should say title yep this should say copyright yep this is so exciting this should say dedication and then looky here we've got uh, underneath the thumbnails there is a little Roman numeral so uh, when I click on that page of the preface, it says Roman numeral 5, lowercase. And then let's go down. I'm going to type a random page number. Let's do page 100, 121. And hopefully it's going to show. Look at there. Up in the upper right-hand corner, I type in the page number, and it's exactly on the right page of the book. Isn't that exciting? Um, okay, so I hope you found that useful, and uh, you will be able to make your PDFs that have been scanned from non-electronic sources into much more user-friendly objects. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you guys some other time. Bye.